today, how many people does asbestos kill? Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. In the latest of our series on asbestos, we consider how many lives have been lost to asbestos-related disease in Australia and beyond. The scale of these fatalities may astound you. We suggest the asbestos industry, other corporations, governments and other agencies have done their utmost to cover up or suppress these deaths statistics. Many from among the moneyed and political interest groups know that public knowledge about the continuing mass deaths caused by legacy asbestos could have profound consequences, including community unrest and strident calls for action. But let's start with a quote from the UK in 1934. Looking back in the light of present knowledge, it is impossible not to feel that opportunities for discovery and prevention of asbestos disease were badly missed. And this from Greg Combe in 2019. In large part, the suffering that's been caused by asbestos disease is an untold story. The most severe harms caused by the history of asbestos in Australia are the human lives lost. And the scale of fatalities from preventable asbestos-related diseases is catastrophic and a major public health disaster. So today, we go through the latest information from Asbestos Awareness Australia. And that report is available for download. Our researchers found that discussion on these deaths and related harms is entirely lacking or incomplete in scholarly and official sources. And we'll leave you, the reader, to consider why that might be so. Our researchers examined academic sources, the Safe Work Australia website, asbestos-related websites and other public health material for evidence on the death counts from asbestos-related diseases. The only official source that attempts to estimate the historical death counts from asbestos-related diseases in Australia is the Asbestos Management Review Report. Further, the single official source that discusses the ongoing deaths is the Asbestos Safety and Eradication Agency, the ASEA, with its safety webpage highlighting estimated annual fatalities of 4,000. Exposure to asbestos causes or contributes to a range of health conditions, including diagnoses of asbestosis, mesophilioma, asbestos-related lung cancer, laryngeal cancer, and ovarian cancer. These are all very serious diseases, with most sufferers dying within relatively short time frames following diagnosis. And we're going to continue to highlight these fatalities because first, our research suggests most Australians are not properly informed about the risks of legacy asbestos and are potentially at risk of dying. Second, our proposed reforms are driven by a desire to save others from the horrors of diagnosis of mesophilioma or lung cancer. There is published medical research that estimates the historical deaths from mesophilioma in Australia, and there are well-accepted models that are used to estimate other asbestos disease fatalities more broadly, both here and internationally. For example, the 2016 Global Burden of Disease Study estimated total deaths that year from occupational asbestos exposure at 218,837, including lung cancer, 191,450, mesophilioma at 27,612, ovarian cancer at 6,022, and larynx cancer at 3,743. This study excludes deaths arising from exposure to non-occupational or environmental settings. These exposures occur in situations outside of workplaces, such as exposure of a pupil in a school or a do-it-yourself home renovator. So the full picture of global fatalities from asbestos-related diseases is still to be revealed. The global study models and other published sources suggest the estimated death counts in Australia from mesophilioma and asbestos-related lung cancer from 1945 to 2020 lies in the range of 60,000 to 152,000. These death counts are still mounting, 
and may continue for another century or longer. If we look at asbestosis, which is a chronic lung disease caused exclusively by the inhalation of asbestos fibres, while this condition is not fatal, it can trigger respiratory or cardiac failure and or can lead to subsequent diagnosis of mesothelioma or lung cancer. There is currently no cure for asbestosis. Asbestosis is a notifiable disease in Australia. However, publicly available statistics are lacking and the numbers of deaths from this condition are not known. Our analysis of the claims data suggests continuing fatalities from asbestosis are around 150 a year. Next, we look at mesophilioma, also called malignant mesophilioma. And that occurs generally when abnormal cells in the tissue that surrounds the lungs grow in an uncontrolled way. This disease is not the same as lung cancer, which starts inside the lungs. Since 1982, diagnoses of mesophilioma have been notifiable to state-based registries in Australia. This data is consolidated nationally by the Australian Mesophilioma Registry, the AMR. There is a time lag between notification and publication of the AMR statistics, so the diagnoses of prior years are commonly adjusted upwards over time. Allowing for such adjustments, Cancer Australia estimates that more than 830 people were diagnosed with mesophilioma in 2020. If the Cancer Australia estimates proves to be accurate, the diagnosis during 2020 will be 15% higher than those reported by the AMR for 2019 and will exceed all prior years. The Cancer Australia estimate includes record statistics for male and females, with female diagnoses up 37% from those included in the 2019 AMR report. Unlike other forms of cancer, exposure to asbestos is the only known cause of mesophilioma in Australia. Once contracted, this cancer is incurable and has a start prognosis with an average life expectancy following diagnosis of 11 months. At present, there are no drugs to prevent the development of mesophilioma tumours following exposure or to treat the cancer effectively once the diagnosis is confirmed. The average five-year survival rate for mesophilioma in Australia is 6%. This is the lowest such rate among the cancer types recorded by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, with minimal improvement in the statistic over the last 30 years. Given these medical outcomes, prevention measures and increased research funding to find a cure or life-extending treatments should be the highest priorities for the industry, policymakers and cancer bodies. Longer-term estimates of the cumulative diagnosis, deaths from mesophilioma, are provided by Lee, Lee and Driscoll, Solberg and the Asbestos Management Review Report, the Asbestos Disease Research Institute and the ASEA. Statistics on the diagnosis and deaths from mesophilioma sufferers are closely linked because, as previously highlighted, the average life expectancy of this cancer is less than a year. Back in 2002, Lee, Davison, Hendry and Berry forecast around 18,000 mesophilioma cases in Australia from 1945 to 2020. In 2003, Lee and Driscoll estimated 7,027 mesophilioma cases from 1945 to 2001 and suggested notifications of mesophilioma diagnoses prior to 1992 were artificially low. And they predicted 18,000 mesophilioma cases in Australia from 1945 to 2020. The Asbestos Management Review Report cited a study estimating 8,191 cases in Australia from 1945 to the 30th of June 2004. When updated using the AMR data, the number of diagnoses and deaths to the end of 2020 is close to 20,000. And the ASEA National Asbestos Profile states that the total number of persons diagnosed with mesophilioma in Australia between 1945 and 2015 is approximately 16,800. When updated to 2020, this figure reaches approximately 20,000. Selberg, Valance, Kina, Takashahi and Lee highlighted 16,679 cases of mesophilioma from 1982 to 2016, and when estimates prior to 1982 and post-2016 are included, 
the cumulative number is around 20,000. The Asbestos Disease Research Institute annual report for 2019 indicates that mesothelioma diagnoses in Australia from 1982 to 2018 were around 18,200, when estimates of cases prior to 1982 and diagnoses during 2019 and 20 are added, the total exceeds 20,000. So to summarise, estimates from medical researchers and government bodies converge around 20,000 mesothelioma fatalities diagnoses in Australia from 1945 until the end of 2020. Confirming a diagnosis of mesothelioma is often very challenging, so these estimates may be understated where sufferers of mesothelioma were not diagnosed before or after death or were not reported to the AMR. Next, lung cancer, which develops when cells grow out of control in a person's lungs on one side or both sides. Lung cancer can be curable in the early stages, but is often not diagnosed until the disease has advanced. While smoking is the single greatest risk factor for lung cancer, some people diagnosed with lung cancer have never smoked, and asbestos is an exacerbating and interacting risk factor. In 1964, a study by Selikoff, Hammond and Churg showed that asbestos workers who smoked had 90 times the risk of developing asbestos-related cancer than non-smokers with no exposure to asbestos. A lung cancer diagnosis is very serious, with a relatively low average five-year survival rate of 19%. The actual number of deaths in Australia from asbestos-related lung cancer is unknown because the causes of lung cancer are not generally investigated or included on death certificates. A body of medical studies investigate the ratio of cases of lung cancer deaths caused by exposure to asbestos compared to mesothelioma fatalities. These study findings vary with ratio spanning from 2 to 6.6 .6 times. Lee and Lamontage indicate that epidemiologists commonly accept a 2 to 1 ratio. This ratio was found in a study by McCormack and is used by Lee to estimate deaths from asbestos-related lung cancer from 1945 to 2020 and is cited by the Asbestos Management Review Report. More recently, Driscoll suggests we can probably expect three or four cases of lung cancer for every mesothelioma case. The 6.6 .6 ratio of lung cancer to mesothelioma cases comes from the International Global Burden Study discussed above, the legitimacy of applying the 6.6 .6 ratio, i.e. 181,450 over 27,612, to the Australian environment is unclear. The accepted 2 to 1 incident ratio leads to 40,000 estimated fatalities from asbestos related lung cancer from 1945 to 2020. If the Driscoll ratio of 4 to 1 is used, the equivalent estimated death count is 80,000. And if the global study 6.6 .6 ratio is applied, the death count from asbestos related lung cancer since 1945 reaches 132,000. Now turning to ovarian and larynx cancer, our researchers have been unable to locate evidence on the past or present deaths from asbestos-related ovarian and larynx cancer in Australia. Next, we'll talk about the continuing human burdens in Australia. The ASCA estimates around 4,000 deaths annually from asbestos-related disease in Australia, equating to 11 deaths a day. To reflect those deaths in context, mesothelioma alone accounts for more than 830 fatalities a year, which exceeds or is close to the death rate stemming from other areas of public health risk. For example, in Australia, the number of accidental workplace fatalities each year averages 250. The number of people who died annually from AIDS at the peak of this epidemic in the early 1990s was around 1,000, and the total number of deaths from COVID-19 as at the 23rd of June 2021, was 910. Lung cancer is the form of cancer linked to the highest number of fatalities a year in Australia, with an estimated 8,641 deaths during 2020. An estimated 3,000 of those deaths arose from asbestos exposure, although published medical studies that review international patient cohorts as a means to estimate the comparative ratios of death from mesothelioma asbestos-related lung cancer vary from 2 to 6.6. .6. The ASCA estimates that the cost 
for people living with an asbestos-related disease in 2015 to 2016 was $11 billion. Overall, there is strong evidence suggesting the asbestos crisis has caused and is still causing or contributing to tens of thousands and possibly hundreds of thousands of fatalities in Australia. And as discussed in prior papers, the associated societal and financial impacts are also immense. Now let's talk about global burdens. The Global Burdens of Disease study estimates close to a quarter of a million fatalities annually from occupational exposure to asbestos, suggesting the death counts from asbestos-related diseases are already in the millions. This level of worldwide fatalities will likely continue or even rise given the large stock of in situ asbestos in most developing nations and the continuing use of asbestos in other countries. Global deaths attributable to smoking still exceed those linked to exposure to asbestos. Tobacco kills more than 8 million people globally each year. However, the act of smoking is at least somewhat voluntary, while exposure to asbestos is completely involuntary. Most, if not all, of the people who have died from asbestos-related diseases were not properly warned about the risks of exposure and were not able or advised to take precautionary measures. Our research is analysed and are well versed in the details of prior corporate and financial scandals and crises in Australia and globally. Those that readers might be familiar with include the following, the failure of HIH insurance in Australia, the collapse of Enron in the United States, the admitted Ponzi structure of the Bernie Madoff investment companies in the United States, the global financial crisis in 2009. And the full costs associated with these companies and crises were vast, especially the GFC. But unlike the asbestos crisis, math deaths did not arise directly from any of these company collapses or events. In our view, monetary and economic losses are one thing. Large loss of human life on an involuntary basis is another. On these grounds, the asbestos crisis is the most costly and brutal of all man-made events or crises caused by corporate activity in Australia and globally. So, turning to our summary and views, unlike most forms of cancer and disease, asbestosis and mesothelioma are incurable conditions that are generally fatal. Both these conditions are man-made or corporate-induced and remain entirely preventable by avoiding exposure to asbestos fibres and dust. In Australia, applying the ratio suggested or accepted in the medical literature and by public health scholars, the estimated combined death counts in Australia from mesothelioma and asbestos-related lung cancer during the period 1945-2020 is in the range of 60,000 to 152,000. These estimates exclude deaths from asbestosis and asbestos-related ovarian and larynx cancer because data on these fatalities is lacking. If you accept the published mesothelioma estimates and the Driscoll ratio of 4 to 1 asbestos-related lung cancer to mesothelioma causes, the estimated death count from asbestos-related disease in Australia has already surpassed 100,000. Deaths from asbestos-related disease in Australia are far from over given the continued exposure of Australians to legacy asbestos and the long latency period of mesothelioma. Thousands more Australians will likely die from asbestos exposure over the next century, including people who have already been fatally exposed and are within their latency period and others who are unwittingly being exposed to asbestos fibres from our built environment. Importantly, our research has found that most prior forecasts of the expected number of deaths from asbestos-related disease in Australia, the peak period of asbestos-related deaths in Australia, and the potential settings resulting in asbestos disease in Australia were all consistently and significantly underestimated. Highly conservative forecasts from commercially interested bodies are not scientific or independent and are consistent with the long-standing patterns of conduct that conveniently ignore or discount the lives lost to asbestos-related diseases and the scale of the asbestos crisis more generally. We posit that the continued acceptance by the powers that be in Australia of thousands of avoidable deaths each year from asbestos-related diseases would be unacceptable to the broader community if it were aware of, firstly, the full extent of the risks and deaths involved,
and secondly, the available actions that could reasonably be taken by James Hardy Industries, CSR, and federal and state policy makers to prevent future harmful exposure to legacy asbestos, especially in homes. The record number of mesothelioma diagnoses in 2020 in Australia should be prompting urgent policy reforms and actions, but instead the silence is, well, deafening. Finally, a word on Asbestos Awareness Australia. Asbestos Awareness Australia Limited is a registered not-for-profit company, limited by guarantee, and it's a registered charity and has endorsement from the Australian Taxation Office as a gift deductible recipient. The company was set up to enhance public awareness and knowledge of the dangers of asbestos threats, to promote measures and policies that prevent or minimise the harms from asbestos-related diseases. And to achieve those objectives, the company provides public access to widely sourced information on asbestos risks and impacts, including the associated medical, legal and political debates. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.